Welcome back to the Fix Station 500. I'm your host, Zach Fix. This episode is a top 10 things to see and do when you visit the Sacred Valley in Peru. Before we get into it, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one in the future. If you think I've left something off the list, please let us know in the comments below. With that out of the way, let's get right into the list. The first few stops on our list start in Cusco, which is the oldest inhabited city in South America. It was also the center of the Incan Empire and its capital. Over 2 million people a year visit this wonderful city. Cusco is a feast to the eyes with all the colors and the gorgeous architecture that combine colonial designs mixed with traditional Incan stone. Which brings us to number 10 on our list, the San Pedro Market and the surrounding area. The Cusco Market in San Pedro is about a 7-10 to 10 minute walk from the main plaza, which is the Plaza de Armas. Most of this walk is uphill, and the streets can be slippery at times, so make sure you have on the proper shoes. Also remember that altitude in Cusco is about 10,000 feet above sea level, so a short walk can feel like a marathon. Even with these factors, we found that walking in Cusco is much more effective than trying to take a cab, because the streets are very crowded and congested, and most of them are one way. Once you reach San Pedro, you'll notice more local shops that will offer much better prices than you'll find elsewhere in Cusco. The shops offer things such as alpaca sweaters and scarves, colonial style paintings, and also you'll find typical Peru and Cusco branded souvenirs, such as fridge magnets, hats, and t-shirts. And it's also a great place to sample some of Peru's street foods, such as the Botoferas, which is a ham sandwich served on a French baguette. Another tip, when buying things in the market, don't be afraid to haggle. We often found just by starting to leave, the price would sometimes drop by half. Also in San Pedro, you will find the Church of San Pedro. This is a smaller church that was built in the mid-1500s. I do not know much of the history of this church, but I do know that it was badly damaged in an earthquake in 1650, and the construction repair the damage was completed in 1699. While this church is on the smaller side, it still is breathtakingly beautiful. The ceiling is elaborately decorated and all the hand-carved woodwork is gilded in gold. This site and the shopping values make San Pedro area in Cusco a do not miss. Bringing us to number nine. Number nine on our list is the Plaza de Armas. The Plaza de Armas in Cusco is Cusco's main square. Here you'll find two of the most beautiful churches the Cusco Cathedral, and the Church La Capana de Jesus. This area in Incan times was known as the Huacapada or the Place of Tears. The name has also been translated as the Aquapada, the Place of the Warrior. The plaza is also surrounded by eateries and shops. You also find many street vendors selling souvenirs. But as I previously stated, you will find much better deals in the San Pedro market. There are tons of street vendors in Cusco. If you stop to talk to each one of them, it could take you up to a week to walk one block. If you are being hassled by a street vendor, just say no gracias and keep walking. They should leave you alone. If you are looking for the nightlife, there are many bars and lounges also located in the plaza. This is a great place to also try the local beverage, the Pisco Sour. The Pisco Sour is kind of like a margarita, but has a slight foam to it since it's been made with whipped egg white. We spend much of our time in Cusco in the Plaza de Armas with the great food choices and the beautiful scenery. Number eight on our list is the Iglesia Santo Domingo. The location that is now known as Iglesia Santo Domingo in Incan times was their most important temple, the Cora Concha, or the Temple of the Sun. The Spanish colonials often would tear down Incan temples and use the stone to rebuild Christian churches on the same site. The Incan foundation can still be clearly seen beneath the church. It is believed that Coracancho is covered in gold, which is most likely melted down and sent back to Spain. There is a replica of the sun disk on display, which was made of entirely solid gold. The sun disk measured more than four feet in diameter. The sun disk was and is very real, but there are many legends that involve the church of Santo Domingo. Among the most outrageous is that of the golden cob. The legend says a group of explorers went into one of the caves located in Saxawaman, and two months later 
came out inside the church during mass holding a cob of corn made out of solid gold. It is rumored that this was melted down and made into the crown for the Blessed Mother that can be seen on display to this very day at the altar of the church. There are also some beautiful gardens located here, as well as the church and the ruins of the Incan Sun Temple. We spent nearly half a day just at this site exploring and relaxing in the gardens. It is a definitely do not miss spot in Cusco. Number seven on our list is Tampa Bache. Tampa Bache is a site near Cusco. It is set into a terrace rock with canals, waterfalls, and aqueducts. In Quechua, the native tongue of Peru, Tampache means guest house cave. We are not sure the significance of this site was in Incan times, but it's believed that it could have been a military outpost or a bath to entertain elite Incan political leaders. This site is well preserved, but there's belief that this area once was walled in, allowing for a more peaceful and private experience while bathing. The spring water comes from inside the cave, which is also a mystery. Make sure to allow yourself some time just to sit in and enjoy the peacefulness of Tampabache. You won't regret it. Number six on our list is where mummifications were formed on the Incan leaders. The site is known as Kenko. Located about four miles away from Cusco, it's easy to get to by taxi, and there are many tours that will take you here as well. The name Kenko means labyrinth. Here you'll find many channels cut into the rocks, meaning it could have once been used as a quarry. In the center of the cutouts is what appears to be a small amphitheater, which might have been used for religious ceremonies or sacrifices. The area where the mummies were prepared is an area carved out of rock, and inside is a table-like feature where the bodies were laid out to perform the mummification process. It is hard to explain the feeling you get when you are standing in the same place where most of the great Incan rulers were prepared for their burial. This site was heavily destroyed by the colonials who were ridding the area of Incan symbology. Still, this site is shrouded in mystery and wonder and is also a must-see. Number five on our list is Olentatambo. Olentatambo is about two hours from Cusco. There are several tours of the Sacred Valley which will take you here. If not, you can visit by yourself or by rented car or via Inca Rail. There are several unique areas on the hillside, including the Temple Hill, the Bath of the Princess, the Wall of the Six Monolith, the storehouses, and a cracked monolith that was brought to the top of the mountain and was cracked during finishing and was not used. The quarry that the site was constructed from was nearly three miles away on the other side of the canyon. All the stones were taken down one mountain using ramps and slides and brought back up the mountain to complete the construction of the Temple Hill. Make sure you give yourself a day or two rest after visiting the site. There are many steps and the elevation is pretty intense. Number four on our list is back in Cusco and it's a Convent of Mercy or the Convent de Mesed. The convent has been incredibly preserved over the years and is a pristine example of colonial architecture. The convent was built in the year 1536, but was heavily damaged some years later in a massive earthquake and was rebuilt to the form that we see today. The convent holds many wonderful colonial artworks and is home of the incredible jewel relic known as the Custodio de la Merced, which is a solid 24 karat gold and encrusted with over 1500 diamonds. They do not allow any photography inside the convent. This strictly is strictly enforced. We were able to take a photo with a courtyard, which feels something straight out of a Baroque period in Europe. Number three on our list is the Incan Rail. The Incan Rail runs from Cusco to many other parts of the Sacred Valley. We took it from Alzatambo to Machu Picchu. Along the journey, you will see much of the Peruvian countryside along with some small Incan ruins and walls. On some trips, they perform a show which acts out some of the Incan legends. We would have loved to do the Incan Trail by hiking, but the train ride is much more comfortable and much quicker. Bringing us to number two on our list, which is Sacsayhuaman. Sacsayhuaman is a short drive from Cusco. Also, there are many tours departing from Cusco that visit this amazing location. Here you'll find giant monoliths that are fitted together with such amazing precision that it makes you say, I'm not saying it's aliens, but it's aliens. Some of these stones weigh more than 440 tons, or the equivalent of 36 school buses. It is believed that during Incan times, 
A large celestial observatory was located here. All that remains is a circular outline of the once magnificent structure. To truly appreciate the Incan engineering, Sox and Waman is a must-do on your trip to the Sacred Valley. Which brings us to number one on our list, the one and only Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu is located in the town of Aquacalientes. You can get there by Incan Trail, Incan Rail, or by bus or car. It is believed that the site was founded in the early 1400s, but some of the buildings seem to have been there long before the Incans inhabited this location. It was rediscovered in 1911 and was declared a UNESCO Heritage Site in 1983. This is one of those places that pictures simply do not do justice. We only spent one day here, but we could have spent an entire week exploring this magical ancient place. We hope you enjoyed the top 10 things to do in the Sacred Valley. Let us know if you haven't left anything out. And then once again in the comments below, thanks again for watching Fixation 500. We'll see you next time. Hi there again. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.